Hey guys, it's Carter. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are all having a fantastic day today. Now, in today's video, we are going to be talking about swing trading. If I started swing trading right now, what would I do and what would be the best strategy to get started? That's what we're going to be talking about today. So I hope you guys all enjoy it. If you're like, who is this random guy on YouTube? My name is Carter. I've been a full-time swing trader in the stock market for over six years. And with that being said, we do have an amazing school where I teach people how to trade. And trust me, I know when people think of YouTubers selling courses or, you know, it's a get rich quick, but no, trading is not a get rich quick. And I know it's shocking for a lot of people. Swing trading is a job. It's a career. It's going to, it's going to take time to grow an account. So having a, having a school, having a community to kind of have your back and ask questions, bounce ideas off of is definitely going to expedite that that learning so check out my school you guys can use code youtube to get 20 percent off we have private live streams group chats quizzes lectures everything you guys need to get started but more importantly how to grow a small account realistically a lot of traders think you can turn a hundred dollars into two thousand dollars in a week no it's not i teach strategies that are realistic that will compound over the years so that's what i that's what i talk about so check out my course down below code youtube two spots left i'll see you in there let's jump into this so with swing trading, if I just started six years ago, what would I do? The first thing I would do is get a trading broker. When I first started trading, I opened up a Robinhood account. And at the time, I was so excited because I was 18 and I was just, you know, it, it's it's that fresh feeling of something new. Open up a Robinhood account, funded it that same day, and I burned through like two grand. But what I didn't realize is there's trading brokers. So a broker like Moomoo, the one I've used for six years, after that Robin Hood dreadful experience, I opened up a Moomoo Moo account and I've loved them ever since. The great thing about having a broker like this is they offer good charting, scanning, and being able to customize things compared to Robin Hood where you're kind of not able to do that. So sign up with Moomoo. Moo. They're absolutely fantastic. I'll put them down below. You guys can get 15 free stock by signing up. But having a trading broker is super, super important because you can kind of figure out what type of trader you are. You know, six years ago, when I first started trading, I actually was more drawn to day trading. So trying to get in and out of positions within that same day. And I had no idea what I was doing. But if I started six years ago and I just focused on swing trading, I would have been way better off than probably where I am now just because I would have known what I wanted and I could have focused my education on that. So pick what type of trader you want to be, whether you're a day trader or a swing trader and focus on that. For me, I was drawn to day trading because I've seen several YouTube videos of how to turn $100 into a million dollars, but then I soon realized that's not realistic. I then found swing trading because it gives me a little more flexibility in my schedule and my trades and more importantly you can still make a ton of money off it if you know what you're doing now after i chose the broker then i would really really invest into education education learning as much as you can is super important with trading because what you do now is is you're focusing on a niche you're building that strategy that will compound on itself you know and what i mean by this is you're going to be focusing on the strategy and you're going to be learning it you're going to be practicing it you're going to be paper trading you're, you're going to be just doing this and doing this for like six months to a year is what i recommend and i know it sounds like a long time but trading is not easy it's not a get rich quick and you need to put in those hours and I can already hear the comments saying Carter don't paper trade guys paper trade there's nothing wrong with building a strategy that works well for you there's nothing wrong with that and then what you do after you paper trade is you fund an account with a small amount of money whether it's fifty dollars whether that it's a hundred dollars but throw a small amount of money in it now what you're going to do is you're just going to buy one share or a fraction of a share of the stock you're going to trade you're going to use that same strategy and you're going to tweak it you're going to have your emotions get involved now because there's going to be cash and money on the line after you guys do this for another six months to a year then what you do is you slowly add more cash and capital to compound and grow that account it's very very simple if you're looking at a trader or trading to, as a way to get rich quick i'm sorry but it's not trading is not easy it's actually very very difficult so you have to have an edge you have to have a community you have to have that education and that's what i would recommend and now 
let's talk about the strategy that I wish I would have learned here. So with Moomoo, one of the reasons I love it here is having is having indicators. So indicators are just ways where traders can kind of get a general idea of the stock. So I know right now this looks super, super confusing. So let's actually remove a couple of them. Right, so now what we have here is just a basic chart with two lines. So these two lines are what we call moving average lines. Now they act as support and resistance. So you guys can see when the stock is when when the stock is above the lines, they act as support. So you guys can see it hits it, and we get good buying pressure. Comes in contact with it again, with again, with it again. It even hits the blue line, establishing good support. Okay. Now recently we had the stock sell off from 31 all the way to $29, which yes, it, you know, dollar wise, dollar wise, that's that's not a huge move. You know, honestly, if we bought here and sold it up here, that's only 8%. So realistically, we'd be looking at about, you know, probably about 4 to 6% on a good trade out of this. So what we need to do now is understand that these indicators act as support and resistance. So if we hop in near and around this moving average line at 29, our target would be 31. But before we enter the trade, we always have a stop loss. So the stop loss is just the max amount of money we're willing to risk. So for this trade here, you always want to make sure we have a good risk and reward, which we're going to figure out here. So if we hopped in here, our risk and reward would be about 3.75. So what this means is we're risking $1 to make $3.75. And this is keeping our stop loss about 2% from its current price, which is about average here. So now what we understand is heavy support on the blue line, which is the 90 day moving average line, you guys can see. What I do think is important here is to look at other time frames. So now let's go ahead and look at the weekly chart. You guys can see I actually drew out the line so we can see it here a little better. So you guys can see this trend actually has more than three touches, right? It hits it once, twice, three times, four times, five times, six times. Each time it hits this red line, we get good buying pressure. So you guys can see the stock is actually approaching it very, very soon. So there could be a nice trade going from that 29 to 31 and keeping our stop loss just below it. Because having a stop loss in place is gonna minimize risk, but more importantly, minimize your loss. When you lose money, because all traders lose money at some point, but what makes up a successful trader from a non-successful trader is the willingness to realize I'm wrong. Taking a step back, cut, cutting your losses, and moving on to other opportunity. But when you're right, the great thing about it is you can compound it by adding to your position. A lot of traders don't do that, but let's get back to the indicators here. So another indicator I use is something called the RSI. You guys can see this green squiggly line here on the bottom. Historically, anytime a stock is under 30 on the RSI, it's considered an undervalued point for this stock. So you guys can see it's trading for near and around a 21 as of right now. So let's actually draw a horizontal line and look at the last time it was trading for a 21 here. Let's move this here. So the last time was actually right in here where the stock went from 28 all the way to 31. So that's good indication. The last time was right in here and a little in here where the stock went from about 27 to 28, which is good. Another point was right here where the stock went from 25 to 26. So we know now, okay, it's on a support or it's near the support line. We have a good upward, you know, good upward trend. So we have good buying pressure involved. It's undervalued on the RSI. The weekly has a good trend. So what other indicators do we want to look at? The other indicator is volume. So you guys can see the volume here is about one, about one million shares traded on that given day, which is is decent. You know, the reason why having good volume is important here is because you want to make sure you can get in and out of your position. So you guys can see that these the on the minute chart, it does have these dashes. These dashes just mean a little lighter volume. If you actually compare this to like Apple, which I know is one of the large, you know, one of the largest companies, you guys can see that during the trading day, it never will have the dash just because there's so much buying pressure involved. But looking at this one during the trading day, there are some dashes. So what I would do with light with a little lighter volume is just 
take your profits a little sooner and cut your losses, you know, cut your losses a little sooner as well. So now that we understand that, let's look at the last indicator. This is what we call the MACD. The MACD indicator is super, super important. And what we're looking for here is the, the signal line breaking above the pretty much the uh, MACD line. And it, there is some separation in it. So we could possibly see a little more sell off before that reversal. But using these indicators are a great way where you guys can get in and out of your position, understand what type of stocks you wanna buy, and pretty much determine is this stock worth worth buying or is it undervalued or overvalued. So guys, I hope you guys all enjoyed this. And you guys can see there could be a nice move from 29 to $31 with the stock ORI. So make sure you guys check out my course where we talk about how to find these stocks and all that good stuff. You guys can use code YouTube for 20% off and I'll see you in there. So guys, I hope you guys all enjoyed it. Like, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.